We're going to talk some currencies. We're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You head on to the newsletters, you'll see the Tiger Forex Report. You can subscribe for $97, folks. Teddy puts out updates every week on Monday, updates throughout the week when warranted. Don't forget he's got a couple of outstanding webinars under the services tab. Whether you're talking about Japanese candlestick pattern stock and, stock and option strategies or capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. Uh, and boy, we got a great day because we got some action as always. Teddy, these Wednesdays, man, we always got some good action. We got some movement today. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, lately we do. Can you hear me okay? We had some technical difficulties there trying to get in. Yep. I got you loud and clear, man. Great. So, boy, I was jumping through. We got movement almost everywhere right now. Teddy, where do you want to kick things off in terms of, of currencies right now? Well, today we have obviously a nice move in the dollar index. And, Ooh. you know, we're coming off a higher move high that we set yesterday. So, uh, you know, it's a profit taking slide. R yields really aren't moving today, you know, so they've been in a kind of a sideways trade. Um, oil right now is hitting the upper part of that range. You know, I've been calling for 70 to 75 dollars as being a range trade area for a while now. And I think we're just flirting with the upside part. I mean, unless we get a breakout with the, like, I would say two consecutive closes above 75 I wouldn't I'd be very cautious with you know being too bullish right now I mean I'm not bearish but I think it's probably going to consolidate back into the range somewhere around 73 74 bucks a barrel you know so but yes. we do have some uh, action in the major currency crosses some of your lesser ones are actually quiet today so whatever you want to talk about we can we can get into yeah, the dollar index is rocking, man. Maybe I mean the euro, the yen. Where do you where do you want to kick it off? I was trying, you know, I'm always looking at currencies when I got you on on Wednesdays, and and sometimes, as you've taught us, you know, it's not always just the dollar. There are certain ones driving it, but it seems like everything is moving this morning, man. In terms of the the big currencies out there, sure. um, so I don't know where you want to where you tell me where what are you looking at most important this morning? Well, let's, let's start, start with let's start with the big dog. We'll go with the euro, U.S. dollar. Perfect. So um, right now we're coming off a nice swing low from yesterday. Now, from the Tiger Forex report, I had a 108.34 as a nice directional pivot level. It's a big monthly number. And we kind of touched that yesterday and came off it pretty strong. And with today's action, if we get a solid close like where we're at right now or even higher, I would expect to see some follow through into tomorrow. Now, be careful with the GDP number tomorrow because if yeah. – Things come out that things start to point towards inflationary, you know, uh, point of view, if you will, with that number or if it comes out, especially um, out of line in a big way. Well, then you could see the yields move all of a sudden, you know, if all of a sudden you start to see something that takes us off this dovish view, you know, even or even starts to point back at a little bit of potential hawkishness again, you know, for that kind of a trend. Well, you could see a big move at reversal in the dollar index and then see all of a sudden, you know, all the majors fall against the U.S. dollar during that release. So I would be cautious if you're if you're long. Uh, pairs versus the dollar going into tomorrow's number, I would tighten up your stops and just be careful tomorrow morning for sure. Nice. And it makes sense. I mean, we got quite a week. We got GDP and that's going to drive it. And then we get the Fed a week from, mm -hmm. from today. Um, now, the pound well. is a totally different story. That Now, this is an interesting situation because the euro U.S. dollar right now is coming off a nice swing low. Overall, the, the medium-term trend has been a bull for the past few months. But for the past month, it's been correcting. So, to, you know, the rally today, it's like you can't just be like, oh, great, the bulls are back. Well, you're, you're coming off a new swing low to begin with, sure. you know. So I'm not trying to call a bottom here. Once again... I've been looking for a lot of sideways, too. And we do have a potential head and shoulders with what's going on here with the uh, euro U.S. dollar. One was triggered in the pound already last week. And now with this rally, we're coming up towards that shoulder. So that could totally negate that sell signal. But once again, let's say we run out of gas where we're at today. OK, and all of a sudden the number does come out the other way. Yields fly all of a sudden to the upside, meaning lower bond prices. Then what happens? The U.S. dollar all of a sudden catches a bid in a big way. We could take out the lows in the euro from yesterday if that happens. So then you're looking at going from where we're trading now at 109.14, going all the way back down to below 108.34. You could be a handle lower easily within a period of like 
20 minutes, a half an hour, you know, that sure. kind of a move, you know, so that kind of volatility is there. I mean, look at how much the yen has moved, moved around in the past two days, you know, so if that number is a reactionary number, I would think you're going to have some real heat in that trade too, you know, yeah. so those currencies, I would be, you know, be mindful of what, what is coming out tomorrow, you know, like calendar releases, you know, I wouldn't say that tomorrow is a news event trade, but it is a trend, potential trend reversal you know, number where it could influence definitely some some uh, traders, especially swing traders uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours, you know. So but there's some good plays, you know. I mean, the one nice thing is that if let's say the number comes out as forecasted and it comes out nice, dollar stays soft. Well, then, you know, you're, you're seeing a nice rally in the pound, the euro, and also U.S. dollar yen. You could see a nice sell off there then, you know. So that would be something that we could really see with that, you know, as far as how the trade thing has been trading today, I'd be careful looking at the dollar or dollar weakness today as like, oh, you know, everyone's bearish dollar. Well, okay, well, but on a daily basis, you can't look at that. You know, you have to look at where the overall trend is and look at what you're trading right now. And we have to be careful over the next 24 hours with that. Nice. I know. We get a lot of data tomorrow morning in terms of what's going to drive and pretty interesting that you get a Fed meeting six days following it when it's going to be some pretty important data. Um, and that's another thing course. too, Tommy. As we get closer to the Fed meeting, we could go, we could stay in this uh, sideways trade. Like we may not get a breakout at all. What happens if we have a dead number tomorrow? Let's say, I mean, right now it's, it's markets are just open a little bit. But let's say we pretty much have had the move of the day. If that happens and we start to just settle into a quiet trade the rest of the session, <clears throat> if tomorrow becomes a non-event, well, then you're looking at Thursday in front of Fed week next week. We're going to go flatline. You know, yeah. so then you're looking at going side. I mean, be careful. Look at the bonds and the tenure. They've been basically going sideways. It's up one day, down the next. You know, it's not like there's any major yeah. moves. You know, and even in the FX crosses, like when we first started the conversation, I said it's the majors that are moving today, not so much the lesser ones. You know, so um, and we have to be, you know, as traders, be mindful of that. You know, for the market conditions. You know, so and I, I and we, this Fed meeting, I would think, I don't know, don't you think it's a pretty crucial meeting as to what they I do or don't do? I would agree, man. I can't wait to hear the words in terms of where the market is, um, mm -hmm. what the Fed has been saying, and and all the talk, of course, about uh, March, which mm -hmm. which is is coming down the line, as we know, pretty quickly. I mean, it's tough. Um, it's not like last week where I came out guns blazing with all kinds of trades for you. You know, I mean, every day isn't like that in the market, and sure. especially. With market conditions, you have to plan yeah. ahead, like pay attention to the calendar. These are not necessarily news event driven trades that are going to happen, but it is going to control how the market conditions are to a degree. No, it's awesome, man, because it's real world. I mean, that's the deal. Tomorrow morning, we got a ton of data. Yeah, unless you want to really risk some huge moves like you're talking about. Um, and I agree. I mean, the yen, I, I was pulling up the charts, Teddy, when you were talking about just mammoth moves over a two day period. Um, and that's ahead of some pretty important data. Right. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man, and I got to love it. When next time we talk to you, it's going to be Fed Day next week. So have a great week. Right. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right, you man. You too, Tommy. Take care. Thanks so much. Folks, check it out. The Tiger Forex Report right under the newsletter tab. And check out those webinars he's done. Outstanding webinars under the services tab as well. We'll be right back, folks.